<clears throat> right, okay, I'm going to kick things off. Oh, fuck me, I'm fucking no the clapper. Well done. Okay, so this is podcast number one for the Young Entrepreneur Society. Yes. So last week we were literally talking about we should be doing podcasts together, but making it so different from any other podcast in the sense of just having a conversation, a chat about life, about business, about all things making cars. money, cars. <laughs> we, we were sitting through our office there talking all things cars and you were sitting there going, this should be a we podcast, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I, I guess that what we're going to do on a regular basis is each week we'll just be dropping some stuff and uh, we'll be posting this on YouTube. We'll get the clips cut up and stuff to put out uh, across social and things as well. And yeah, we're creating a movement with the Young Entrepreneur Society. So why don't we start off talking about that briefly and then let's just get into some chat. Yeah, for sure. So for those of you that don't know what the Young Entrepreneur Society is, I hope if you've been following, you do. Um, we are like an alternative education platform for entrepreneurs. Now, if you've been to school, which I hope you have, entrepreneurship is so underrepresented in schools. You know that as well. Yep. And, I mean, you went to school in like the seventies, so it's obviously not changed <laughs> since I've came around, right? But I'm clutching, trying to keep hold of my youth here. Youth, right? <laughs> so entrepreneurship is so underrepresented in school. Business studies is never going to teach you how to be an entrepreneur. Like, th there's no way for you to actually go and get access to entrepreneurial education. It's pretty much impossible. And we sat down last year and thought to ourselves like, what can we do to bring in a platform that's going to allow young people to have access to the resources the people that are required and the true skills you need to run a business like school is all well and good if you want to go and use that stuff to go to university but if you're looking to be an entrepreneur school teaches you nothing so the way i thought about it was you know instead of moaning about why someone should have built this how education should be different why don't we spend some time when i say some time a lot of time building it for people and, and, and go out and actually solve the problem ourselves and that's what we've done um like you said it's becoming a movement the members are just so motivated for success it's like having a little clan of people like they're so like behind each other's like different business ventures and stuff like that. it's fantastic to see man like i i love it that's what i wanted i didn't want something that people just come use it go i want people to come and almost be like a little I'll manage to get with me. That's what I that's yeah, what I want. I'm loving it. I'm loving how we've been running this for a few months mm -hmm. and we've been delivering content. We've got more stuff to go out because our game plan is is that we want to be delivering high value content that's going to help people have actionable stuff to go out there and get results because sure. that's what it's all about mm -hmm. and just hearing people's wins already ah. and the confidence that people are getting oh, it's crazy, and it's man. been it's been a big thing for me working with young entrepreneurs because like someone like yourself is so driven so motivated at a young age as i was as well but times went on a little bit so i turned 37 <laughs> shortly oh. and i still feel i still feel like a young entrepreneur do you know that I way would, in the grand scheme of things though you are yeah I like, mean, like I mean, that's it the, the average age i believe of a million you know, in the world is like 52 or something like that okay so when you think about it if you beat father time in any way you've done it younger than most so i and it's yeah. not like you just got money like six months ago I mean, you've been <laughs> in this game a while mate we'll yeah. take that away you were a young entrepreneur <laughs> yeah 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 let's have a chat about the school and stuff as well because um being a young entrepreneur mm -hmm. like my young entrepreneur journey kind of started even though i never knew what the word meant back then was just doing paper rounds and and selling like um, records and stuff like, like I've, I've got, honestly i've got crack stories <laughs> right uh but what, what were you what was the stuff that you did at school did you do any kind of things like that right, you doing anything? not really but there's a couple of examples right now what was your first one like go back to, i'll tell you my first one because i remember it like in some i don't know if the young entrepreneurs these days will even know what i'm talking about here I right, not, right i'm, right, I'm so waiting to see what you're going to say did, here did you did you guys get dinner tickets of course okay so in that's school. that's still Aye, a sorry, common thing you got dinner tickets if you will skint exactly no everybody get dinner right. tickets we can agree oh, on that did, did you did you have money uh, did you have money yeah. we were balling okay. i used to walk in just throw my dinner tickets about the place <laughs> so, so dinner tickets back the day had a value of a quid a ticket right which this is going back a wee bit so please tell me you bumped her over dinner tickets <laughs> on one occasion it's not me but somebody did and we started that to print money we started, mate, like, oh mate like that was like you know that, is that, that, that was <laughs> you, you knew you were getting not just a bottle of Tudor Rose at the weekend. You're getting a bottle of Bucky. Oh, yes. <laughs> Eldo. <laughs> My God. You knew, like, back in the day, right, when you grew up in a scheme, you knew that if you had a good week with your paper round or anything, when you could afford MD 2020 or... You or, know, or, I never or, boost when I was a wee guy. No. I never drank when I was a wee guy. And I don't know why, right, because everyone around me did. And when I went to secondary school, I kind of stopped hanging about in Pollock Shield so much where I was from. It's like hanging about Moss Park and with my, my mates in school. 
but I never really hung about with like the super popular group. I was mates with all of them. Like, my yeah. mates were all people who played PlayStation and like me. I I think the first time. I, what age were you the first time you got drunk? Probably like eleven or something. <laughs> no, I'm being serious. Probably what, what 12, 13? I was young. Right. What, what, what are you in in first year? What age? Twelve. Oh well, there you go. I I, I was like seventeen. I wow. was like basically an adult, right? Had I tried alcohol, of course, right? But the first time I actually got drunk, I was like 17, mate. So I don't know why I just never caught on to that drinking culture. It, Maybe because yeah. I didn't have the entrepreneurial motivation to go out and make money for my, but, but I, my I, I never, I never had a choice. That's the thing. It's like, think about it when you, where you grow up. We always talk about your social circles and who you surround yourself with is kind of who you become. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I was in with the wrong people at such a, a young age, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, which led down a different path that uh, I don't wish for anyone. You know, the sooner you get and get out of that, the better. Of a lot of drunk or getting drunk constantly every weekend, and and that's what you lived for. You know, it's just Aye. nuts. But go back to the kind of entrepreneurial stuff, right? So, so dinner tickets is my yes. first one because my mum would always give me a pound as well, and it's amazing how much a a quid could go back the day. We go to Man. like. Um, some of the places in the Pollock Centre where it was before Silverburn. It was like a pyramid, wasn't it? Aye, like it was a just, mad shape. Eh? Like, oh God. And, you know, it's just amazing how far that would go. So I would sell my dinner tickets, you know, and then that was my first entrepreneurial journey before into the whole paper rounds. And I had a few different paper rounds. I had my sister doing one of my, two sisters doing my paper rounds. So I was making money from them, making money as well as my own and everything else. And then a few other things. But what was yours? Do you remember your Aye. first simple one that you were doing? So, so bear in mind, one thing that I was always able to do was my dad was always a self-employed spark. So if I wanted to, I would never ask my parents for anything. My dad would pay me twenty pound a day. Pretty reasonable when you're like eleven Wait, or you? twelve. Fuck it, you were getting twenty quid a day by I, then. I was getting stuck under floors, like pitch black, dragging cables like I a would slave happily child. have done that for twenty quid a day. Oh my god, you must have been the richest kid ever. No, but I hardly ever done it. I hardly <laughs> ever done it because he wasn't always working on weekends and stuff like that. But the odd times, see during summer. Yeah. During, if I knew my summer holidays was coming up, especially when I got to that 13, 14, I would try and go out with my dad maybe two days a week. Yeah. That. Now, in terms of that's not entrepreneurship, that's employment. Do you get what I mean? That that yeah, was yeah, me yeah, going yeah, and yeah. getting a bit of employment. Now. I've got two great examples here of entrepreneurship. The first one was just because what what do you think about when you're a, a young man? You think about paper rounds, like you've just said, yeah. right? So in Paul Shields was a shop called Paper Rack that everybody got their papers from up on um Albert Drive. And I thought I was like gonna get caught doing this, right? But I'd always said to my mum, Oh, can I do a paper round? See, when I think about this story, mate, it's kinda weird. And my mum would always be like, No, 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 whatever, just don't do it, like enjoy your young life or whatever it was. Now, my mate, James, we were like, let's go and do it. James Boyd, right? So we went up to Papal Rack at, like, I'm talking half six in the morning one day, but it was on the weekend. It was, like, Sunday Times or something. It was getting delivered with the Herald, right? And we went up with our BMXs, thinking, grab papers, down all the streets in Polish Shields, get the papers delivered, we're gone, right? And we turn up, and the guy, I can't even remember the guy that owned Papal Rack, it's called something different now, goes like that, oh, We'll just do it in my car. It's faster, and I'll show you the doors you need to go to and all that, which was perfectly logical. But then you realise you're like ten, and you get in a car with a random guy you don't know. The two of us, and obviously we didn't get like our bums touched or anything. We just <laughs> went and delivered the papers. It was fine, right? But I got up that early because I was like, I don't want my mum and dad to wake up and hear me. So I've like locked the door, left, right, and our house was like creaky and all. <laughs> like, I mean, I got back before they'd even woke up. My mum never knew I told her like seven years later or something, right? So that was the first one, but I never kept doing it. I'd done it that one time and I got a weird vibe off it that maybe my bum was going to be touched in the future. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that anymore, right? But the the first time that I went, oh, something clicked and I went, I can make money, right? When the Pope came to Bellaston Park, maybe 2012. I know he's been there twice, like two different Popes. So the Pope went to Bellaston Park and, you know, people are selling programs and giving away magazines and, and all that because it's a huge event right I, I mean it wasn't anything to me but in terms of just that religious movement there's so many people there and there was a, a guy that was a jehovah's witness which was a bit odd because it's catholicism and he was giving out these free jehovah's witness magazines but on the front there was like a photo of the pope right which was quite interesting so i was like okay and i said to that guy i said how much are these just out of curiosity because i wanted one and he goes oh they're free and I said to the guy, I think the guy was blind, which makes this story worse, right? I said to the guy, I says, I'll help you give them out. Me, my mate Andrew Ramsey, my mate James Cochran. And he goes, yeah, okay. So we took a, like, 
you know, you get the plastic bands that go into yeah, yeah. sharp, those things that hold yeah, the yeah. magazines together. We have piled two of these each, right? Drag them down to different gates at Bella Park, all on um, like Moss Park Boulevard, right? So Andrew's at one end beside Dumbreck High Flats. I'm in the middle. James is at the end beside the sports centre. And people were coming up because there was a photo of the Pope on it and people are so motivated to see the Pope and they're so charged up. They're not reading and seeing it's Watchtower Jehovah's Witness magazine. They yep. just see a photo of the Pope. And I just decided I'm just going to start asking for a pound. So I just started keeping my hand out and giving these magazines and people were just whacking money, man. Now, I, I, I was saying at the start, a pound, a pound. Some people were dropping two pound because they feel good. Like the Pope's there, that's a massive thing for them. It's such a huge event. They drop a fiver and all that. Mate, I think we must have made... Don't know, like 50, 60 quid each. When you think about it, at 2012, I'd have been like 14 or something like that, 15. Yeah. So I was like, this is like mega. But that was the first time I'd had a click and go, oh, and all I've had an opportunity then that I've went and made money from. Yeah. The rest of them were just me trying, like, going out with my dad and trying to catch, like, yeah. wee labouring shifts here and there. That was basically just having a job, really, wasn't it? Like, yeah. I remember my most creative one. Right. So you're going to have a laugh at this, right? Is it legal? Oh yeah. All oh, right. Cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cool. I mean, can we talk about the the ones that are not legal? <laughs> um, that's the thing when you when you you're growing up in a scheme though, it's very easy to get caught up in a lot of bad shit. That thankfully, and I tell the story a lot all the time about my mum being mad Liz, right? Mm -hmm. That that kind of stopped me from really great bath bombs, by the way. Grandma's Real gifts. Good. Grandma's Just, gifts. Yeah. Shout out grandma's gifts <laughs> on the bath bombs, baby. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, so she kept me kind of from really going off the charts. But this was a cracker that we used to do. So do you remember Penny for the Guy? Oh, mate. Of course. You're basically scamming. <laughs> Penny for the Guy <laughs> a scam, what? mate. It oh, is, no, it's no. It but is. here's the thing. Here's what we realised, right? So me and, and my friend at the time, Kevin, uh, we, we never shout went. Out we, oh, shout out, Kev. Shout out, Kev. We never, we never uh, went for Penny for the Guy. We would say a pound for the guy. Now, it's not like we always got a quid, but do you know that way we... Setting the expectations. No, no, here's the thing. Where do people go when they do Penny for the Guy? The local shops and all that stuff? Aye. Guess where we went? Don't know. We went outside of Darnley Sainsbury's. Oh, was that there then? Aye. Really? Aye. I thought that seemed... That bit where the petrol station is not Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been I there thought, for fucking ages. Mate, I thought that was like 10 years old. I can assure you I wasn't doing it in my twenties, but <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't put it past you. I wouldn't put it past you. Standing with your uterus in the petrol station, the pound for the guy, please. <laughs> Wait, but, but here's the thing. Think about it. Like, why would you do it outside a shop uh -huh. where you've got less foot traffic? Do it a supermarket. A supermarket. Where As you've the got government, more you get foot smashed traffic. about by the government. Honestly, for like sure. we we literally made a fortune. When I say a fortune. I'm talking about. 100 quid a time. What? Over. Exactly. 100 bricks. Exactly. What? Because you were there for a couple of hours just racking up, taking, I mean, you know, coin, and then that was it. You were, you know, paying for a taxi. <laughs> paying for no, a taxi. No, no, that's to, disrespectful. To, 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 to that is so road. disrespectful. Honestly. That's unreal. Was that when you had to go inside and they had the landline just for taxis? Exactly. Right? Supermarkets yeah, just yeah, phoned the landline. Just, yeah. So, so that was that was crazy. Getting a taxi, that's like spitting on the people that <laughs> gave you the money, mate. Getting a taxi, uber luxury place. <laughs> <laughs> and I think for me, it was always like try to do things that that could could kind of make you money and get creative and things, you know. And um, and and quite uh, early on as well, I get into it must have been a big thing. Get into get a set of decks and records and all that stuff, and go up to 23, 23rd precinct uh, was the name of the record store in, in oh, Glasgow. Right. And then you'd go up there and you would get all sorts of records, Happy Hardcore, House, all oh, that kind of stuff. yeah. You know, and if you got up there, you could get certain records and stuff. And I remember um, saving up money to buy uh, some of the best record collection from a couple of other guys that were quite good DJs and all that stuff back in the day. And then I had a great collection. So you could sell records at, at quite a bit, you know? Really? So just trading records, selling things, everything else as well. And, um, you know, just, just anything that you could be resourceful with and, and making money. Because from a young age, I just, I saw people who had money. Do you know what's crazy about this just now? See, nowadays, uh, what I see is, see when you see people who, are, this is not for everyone, especially right. not this audience watching this kind of stuff here, but I see it a lot that those that are successful, Nowadays, in business or whatever it may be, it seems to be a narrative of 
yeah, they don't pay their taxes, they rip people off, they're scumbags or whatever. It's crazy. But back then, if you saw people in Dragon's Den or you saw successful people, or you saw people in nice cars, it was never that. It was like, oh my God, I wonder what they have done and what did they do to get that? And asking them questions. And they're almost like, many celebrities if not celebrities mm -hmm. so for me back then i would see anybody who looks successful and again when you're a young person you think about the cars that they drive of course you think the about the houses they live Aye. you know you think about all of that stuff mm -hmm. and this is why for me at a young age is like getting around um you know go going to places like just even long before i had a car just walking around seeing the big houses in certain areas and just sitting going, wow even, like you forget how low you set your bar as well when you're like younger, right? Because when you're from somewhere that is not that good, somewhere that is slightly better is like a world of difference to you. Yeah. So you're not actually, like you wouldn't even have imagined or been able to visualise, for example, the house that you live in today. Like know, it, it yeah. almost the houses that wouldn't, wouldn't have even made sense. Yeah. It, it, yeah. They don't exist. That's what you would get. You'd be like, oh, that's where a movie star would stay in Beverly Hills. Do you get yeah, what yeah. I mean? Like that's what you would think, right? And it's funny because I, I know for a fact, I bet if you were in Pollock, you were probably going where? Like Crookston, like or the Paisley Road West, there's nice bungalows there, some sandstones, houses that are nice, but, I, I, and I don't say this to take away from how nice the houses are, but in comparison to where, you live now in the kind of the places we've seen in the world and the hotels we've got the state and all that kind of stuff it's well it's, we, de it's decent like it's good but it's not like hyper we would have thought those people were like millionaires you know yeah we, we were chatting this about cars because he, here's the thing right so when i'm like there was just this happened literally only a few weeks ago i'm in the bentley I'm driving along and i see another bentley it's just coming up behind us and going by nice. and of course i clock it in the mirror and it's got that kind of mean type look, right? Especially like with the lights on. The front. Yeah. And as mm -hmm. it just went by, I'm looking around going, oh, that's, that's a stunning car. And I'm like, I'm fucking driving the exact same car. It's like, hold on a wee minute. Where, where yeah. do you lose that or what? You get because so it, desensitized. It, yeah, because it becomes your norm. And you were saying that about driving like a big, like the S class and stuff yeah, at the I, time. Before and I sold it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, so you're obviously getting the roller, which is a big bus. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. it's like, I, oh my th God. That's the thing that's so funny, right? So, Obviously, so, some people might not know, but I, I, I bought like a, a Rolls Royce Ghost, right? Uh, it's like Cadbury's purple, lovely car. Now, you get the Ghost, you get the Ghost extended wheelbase, the same when you get the Phantom, the Phantom extended wheelbase. This one isn't an extended wheelbase, thankfully, because I've got like these two like sandstone things to get into my drive. I honestly don't know if I could turn it round because it's that long. Um, so I'm glad I didn't get an extended wheelbase because it'll be, it'll be easier to get this in. Now, it's funny because that was like such a huge step for me. Average age of a Rolls Royce owner is 58 years old, right? I'm 26. So it's less than half. Average age of a McLaren owner is actually only 33. It's oh, a okay. young man's supercar, right? I'm still, I got that when I was 25, right? So having the McLaren, the X3M, the Rolls Royce coming too. And obviously I stay in the nice bit of Pollock Shields and I always tell stories about how I stayed in the not so nice bit and I used to walk about the nice houses and that's where I live now, right? And I I'm pretty sure you've done the same thing. You end up in a townhouse in Crookston, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so when you're from Pollock and you move into Crookston, you're going up in the world, exactly. you know? Exactly. And that was the same. You've done to... the exact same yeah, thing, Yeah, right? yeah, exact same thing. So it's funny because I'm still like, I've driven the Wraith before than own one. I just had a shot of one when I was in Dubai driving it for a couple of days and I'm like so excited about this ghost coming and... Then I pull out the house like a couple of days ago and I'm I'm driving down the street in the McLaren and I see a brand new Cullen and Black Badge, Rolls Royce Cullen and Black Badge, £500,000 car. And I don't look at that and go, oh, my ghost is rubbish now. I look at that and I go, mate, Respect. nice one. That's sick. It's got the 24-inch Ford Giato wheels on and all. it's unreal, right? So I was like, that's sick. Drove it away. And then yesterday... I'm pulling out the house and I'm still excited about my ghost. And this old couple across the road were taking delivery of a, a 2017 Phantom Extended Wheelbase. The biggest motor car you can get on the road, right? Unless you get a Maybach Pullman. You ever seen a Maybach Pullman before? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The Pullman's massive, yeah. but they're like impossible to get, right? So these guys with the Rolls Royce fan, I'm looking at it. And it's funny because I'm looking at the front. Every Rolls Royce, the front is very similar. Whether you're the Wraith, the Ghost, the Cullinan, the lights are very similar. I'm looking, I'm going, whoa, that car is huge. Then I forget, like, I'm going to be in a car that is not too dissimilar a size because you do get so desensitised to it. I'd be in my S-Class and someone would go past me in an S-Class and I'd go, fuck, that's huge. 
But I had, a, I had the L, the S350 L, so it was the longest one you could get, minus the Maybach. And I was looking at it going, whoa, that's massive. You just forget what you're in. People always say to me, like, when I get a new car, like, oh, when are you going to get used to it? Because you're, you're the worst at telling me this, and I don't listen. I don't listen to you, right? Because you're always like, you're going to be bored of that in, like, four months. I'm like, nah, 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 nah. And then, like, six months later, I'm like, oh. When you Something else. Mate, this is my, this, that Rolls Royce my third car this year. The McLaren. Let, let's okay. Tell through the cars you get the McLaren X3 M X3. competition, which is by far one of the best cars I've ever owned. Yeah, I, uh, I really like it. And the Rolls Royce Ghost. The Rolls Royce Ghost. So, so here's the thing about cars. I want to talk about this from an educational point of view, especially for those that are watching or young entrepreneurs or anyone, as a matter of fact. So this is the funny thing when it comes right. Like for anyone who goes out there and buys a car cash, are utterly fucking stupid. You know, I bought that Rolls Royce. You never bought that cash. I bought it. Yeah. I bought it. Let me repeat what I just said there. <laughs> right? let, let, let me just repeat what I just said there. I'll explain this now, second. Now, I know where you're going to go with this, right? But but here's the thing. Look, well, well, I've just did the same in the Bentley. So, so you know, but slightly different again. Because again, when I first situational. got... Situational. Yeah, situational, right? Because here's the thing we need to think about it too, right? When it comes to cars. Because cars lose their value. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not assets. We know they're depreciating assets, sure. right? It's our to depreciating commodity as such. So from our point of view, if you think about it, like certain cars could, you can make money, more money on it in the sense of getting, just taking a finance payment on it, mm -hmm. you know? So if you take a finance payment on it, and again, this is the other thing that comes to mileage as well, because I hear so many stories of people getting cars like, oh, I don't want to put the miles on it. Well, don't fucking get the car if you're I worried about putting the miles it. on it, right? That's the thing, if, you, if you're ever worrying about the fuel, if you're ever worrying about insurance, tax. if you're ever worrying about tax, the maintenance, tires, or, or, yeah. or tires, I mean, fuck me, the, the tires on a Urus, like, you're constantly changing them. How, how much do you pay for a tire on yours? I've no idea, Elizabeth deals with it, but it's, you're, you're lucky if you can change a two grand, aye. you know? No, you won't for four tires. Aye. You won't, because the reels on mine, I've got Pirelli P0 XL MC Silent courses. See, as soon as a tire's name's that long, you're yeah. fucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 525 yeah. quid a tire. Yeah, so, so th that, that's the crazy thing. So uh, where am I going with this, right? So going and buying something cash is not good use of money because if you think about it, like what you should always be thinking about with your own funds is cash on cash return looking for opportunity. So let's say you take that money, you go and throw it into a car, 200 grand car or 100 grand car, whatever, 50 grand car. That's you tying up money. The cost of finance these days against a car is, is so low. Yeah, it's it's cheap. so cheap. It's cheap. But you're using other people's money that will lend against a car. And again, if it goes down a little bit, it doesn't really matter because the reality is you're not tying up your capital. So mm -hmm. if you've got cash there, especially... Um, if you've not got a lot of it because you're going all in on a car thinking you need to buy it cash, then you're depleting your cash reserves. And that cash reserves, you should be thinking about what can I put that into? What Investing? opportunity? Where yeah, can I sure. invest that? Is it property? For Is sure. it into buying some stock at wholesale that I can go and sell at retail? Mm -hmm. You've got to be thinking about cash and cash return. For sure. And I always talk about people who are looking to get cars is if you, you want the fancy cars, the nice cars, the sports cars and all that stuff. And I get that. There's an image thing. The people want it. Why not? I get it. But at the same time, you should really only be going for those cars when you can afford it, mm -hmm. you know? And ideally, when your investments and your assets are able to pay for it as well. But those that go out there and just, you know, buy things cash, you've got to look at your situation. It's not good use of money. Cash on cash returns well, sure. you're looking for. You know, one of the things I always say as well, if you love cars, you're always going to want to have multiple cars. Because we were talking about this earlier. People need to eventually get out the mindset of what car do I want and turn it into what cars do I want, right? And then yeah. those people who do that with planes, it, it never stops. Like there's there's a next level for everything, right? And say after your investments, your uh, general lifestyle costs and all that, let's say you're left with £100,000 a year. Like you've got to a point where you're successful, young entrepreneur now, you're making good money, you've got a spare 100k a year. Now you can go and buy a nice car for 100k. Like you you can buy you could get a ghost depending on the spec and in the year you can go and get a ghost for hundred k you could maybe get a McLaren five forty c you could definitely get a twelve c the older ones you get a Gallardo like there's loads of cars maybe a little bit older a bit more miles that are serious bits of kits for hundred grand right but looking at the deposits you pay on new supercars like the payments you pay per month you could have like three very nice cars they'll cost you under hundred grand a year I'm talking very you can get like a Hurricane. You could have, you could probably have a hurricane, a wraith, 
and something a bit more sensible, such as the X3M competition, and it'll cost you less than 100 grand a year. Like, I was talking to uh, Taylor McDonald about this yesterday. He was asking me, like, how much does it actually cost to, like, run a McLaren, have a McLaren? Like, how much it costs you per year? And when I broke it down to him, he's like, that's a lot, but it's not insane. Like, I could have, for under 100 grand a year, like, like three McLarens. If I wanted to, obviously I wouldn't, three of the same car. But, like, if your interest is in cars, finance is the way to go. Like, the only reason I got that ghost cash is because I'm not going to keep that for a long time. I'm maybe going to keep it for six, seven months. And my AMG GTS that I had, I'd done a little bit of work to, and it just made it a bit awkward to sell. And there was someone who really wanted it, who owned a car garage. I was like, right, okay, they, they offered me on it. And I was like, nah, that's not what I want. I says, well, what have you got in stock just now? The AMG GTS was on finance. And like you said earlier on about just paying off the Bentley, I was like, right, how much finance this GT got? 66 and a half grand. So I just paid it. I was like, right, it's paid. I own the car now. So I said to the guy, I was like, right, there's six, six and a half grand left on that. I've paid it off. What cars have you got in? Oh, we've got an SVR. I'm like, right, I don't want an SVR. I've got an SVM comps. A little bit smaller, but it does yeah. the same job. Why we don't want an SVR? We've got this, we've got that, we've got this. And he's like, we've got a Rolls Royce Ghost. And I was like, mm. okay. Tell me more. I was like, 6.7 litre V12. I was like, right. First thing I done was check insurance. You know, to add that onto my multi-car policy, it's only a £1,055 a year. Yeah, uh, insurance, unless you're getting like a proper supercar that's a race car, insurance is not that, nah, that expensive. Nah, I mean, I've got I've got the McLaren, the Roller, the X3M, and Jess's TT, and I'm five and a half grand a year. For a young guy, that's amazing. That's For those cars, that's That's insane, right? And Jess is a bit younger than me as well, on a two-litre TT. Like if I tried to get insured on a two-litre TT at like early 20s, 20 year old, years old, I'd have been like Mate, four grand a year. My Ford Fiesta, the age of 17, I couldn't even get a year's insurance. I had to go in a, what's called a bonus accelerator, which is six months. And once you complete six months, they then give you a full year's insurance. My six months first insurance was 1,600 quid on a Ford Fiesta M Reg. So, so that was straight on my student loan. I was, I was 2,400 pounds for my Civic for a year. It's just nuts. My first past. It's nuts. And then my and you're first. paying it monthly. I bet you did not have 1,600 quid to pay oh, that. Of course not. Monthly, like, you're getting smashed on interest. And, and, and it's and actually 2,800 quid yeah, or something. And then, uh, then for the whole year, because after I passed the six months, it was 2,200 for a fucking Ford Fiesta. It's ma- mate, they, 500 they, quid they car. They nail young drivers to the yeah, ground. You know what? They nail to the ground. But I, I, I end up saying to the guy, like, I like the sound of ghost. Send me some more information. It's fully spec. It's got every option you could imagine. Um, it's in incredible shape. And I said to the guy, look, how long have you had it? I've had it for a few months. I was like, look, here's what I value my GT at. What do you value the Ghost at? Let's work something out. So a bit of cash being exchanged and then swapping the cars. So I own the Ghost, but like you're saying, I, I don't want to sit and own that car for five years and watch it go down. And the great thing about the Ghost is if I own that for six, seven months, put four or 5,000 miles on it, I might lose seven grand it's not going to be a huge loss um so it's not the worst thing in the world it's better than having the gt sitting there not driving it just doing nothing there's nothing yeah. worse than having a supercar there that you just don't drive so, so here's the thing when it comes to finance right so a lot of people say oh your cars are on finance or whatever right and someone I get commented that. this on one of my ads today yeah. saying like because i said something like winners focus on winning losers focus on winners this guy commented on it saying yeah winners also buy their mclarens up front and don't pcp them and i was like firstly you know nothing because you can't pcp a mclaren you know that you can't pcp a mclaren right you just you, you can't do it i think because they break all the time and I went and bought one to mark me, right? Um, and I just commented back saying, yeah, mate, like, that's interesting, nice one. You obviously don't have much about finance, but I just bought a Rolls Royce, and then I said, I hope your mum puts the heating on tonight, and he didn't reply. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's the thing, right? You first got to have to have the income, right, to be able to get the finance. There's this kind of idea that people are like, hold on a minute. Over it, 300 grand a car finance. That's like two times the average cost of a house in Scotland and people are saying you can't you only get them because you're skint and I'm like mate do you know how much money I need to make to have those f- cars they check my bank statements and that are you mad yeah no it's really is crazy but here's the thing as well right let's say like you just get your fur let's say you get your your up and coming and you get your income to a certain level that allows you to get um like a supercar or whatever like a, a high value car over 100 grand or whatever even though you can get some great cars under 100k right s3s a45s yeah. not amazing so, so as soon as you're able to get one right and, and the good thing about it is because you have you've been able to get it you've got the affordability you can show it then a sensible thing is is to swap that car every year or two 
because now that you've got the finance, it's easy for you in providing you maintain the payments. And of course, please don't go and do this if it's going to put you in a situation where you can't afford that you should not be getting the car in the first place. Work harder, make more money, right? <laughs> Get disposable income sure. to then be able to do that. And the reality is, though, you can swap a car every year, every two years, and sure, you're losing some but not a massive amount. But because you're able to get the finance, it's easy for you just to rotate a finance product to the next one, to the next one, the next one, and you'll never go back to driving uh, cars of anything less. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's a good thing. Plus, it allows you to keep on building up your cash, not buying something cash. Going back to what I said earlier on, putting that cash on cash return to build your business, to make more income. Mm -hmm. And it's the same, like, look at property as an example. Like, same chat when it comes to pro to cars. You don't see anybody turning and saying, oh, but you got a mortgage on the property. You know, you never bought it cash. You can't have money. It's actually the opposite. <laughs> I find people, like, people who would roast you for having a car on finance, like, when so are the same people that would say, oh, I own my house. And I could technically turn around and go, hmm, pretty sure... Some type of financial institution has a charge on that house. I don't think you actually own it. You know that way, like it's just it's picking at different things. But like nobody ever says that. Getting, I would actually say when people get a mortgage, it's like they're, they're proud of it. Like especially, I guess if you come from like a working class. Yeah, but I knew hardly anybody that owned their own house. You know what I mean? Yeah, because you, you, it's this whole idea. You, you own your own home. And by the way, like on that as well, like no one should feel like by renting somewhere that that's an issue either. Yeah. Like I rented for such a long period of time. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. You know, arguably. I, st I still do. Yeah, like, and, and like, arguably. And I stay in a fucking nice house. Yeah, but, but there's nothing wrong with that at all. Again, I can fucking afford it. That's the thing. Mate, a lot of people turn <laughs> like they're like, but I but, oh, only rent his house. Yeah, but you can fucking afford it. That's yeah. the, like, that's the thing. Like, if I can go and have. I'll be honest, right? I truly, and maybe this is because I've no, I don't have any kids, right? I truly value cars more than houses just now. Like for me, I would rather if I had to stay in a studio flat, but it had four parking spaces and I could have my roller and my car. I would do that if that's yeah. what the choice I had to make. But I don't have to make that. I can kind of stay within reason where I want and the location that I'm in. And like people always say, that, so like, why don't you get a mortgage? Blah 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 blah. Like the the way I always see it is for me at my age just now, I don't want to be geo-locked in any way. Now, knowing the way that I acquire properties for myself and for my clients, I wouldn't be going on market and spending 80 grand over for a house because it's got a, a new kitchen and my missus likes it. I, I would still be buying in a appropriate manner that's going to give me a, a good solid asset. But I, if I get an opportunity, let's say your entrepreneur society, we're going to, we're branching outside of Europe. We're going to UAE now, we're going to America. Like, and let's say I need to go to Dubai for six months. I need to go to Dubai for a year build the business like i'm not gonna be like oh i can't go i need to pay santander 800 pound a month like i want to be able to go right sound put my stuff in storage and go like yeah my problems because people say oh but you're you're just paying someone else's mortgage okay but people do that for me i don't i don't care yeah it doesn't bother me people are so interested in where they can save money i am honestly not in the business of saving money. That doesn't mean if someone goes, you can have this thing for 100 quid, you can have the exact same thing for 110. I'd go, yeah, give it for 110 for no reason. But I'm in the business of making money and investing money. I'm not that really safe. Yeah. I'm not. My dad will drive from Pollock Shields to Costco and Silverburn, uh, Silverburn and Springburn because the fuel is like five pence per litre cheaper to fill his car than go to the shell around the corner. And I'm like, how little do you value your time to drive there? Yeah. Do you get, like, I'm not here to save money. Yeah, no, no, the, the, the time thing's crazy because most people are conditioned to exchange their time for money. So they're hunting for bargains and everything else. Like, think about it. Like, Amazon, to go and buy stuff on Amazon, it's not the cheapest place. No. Right, because... Convenience. It's, it's convenience. It's time. When I want to buy something, I'm on Amazon, boom, 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 done, ordered, it's going to the house. I'm not sitting there searching online trying to find the best deals. In fact, I hate shopping. You know me because you kind of take the piss a lot. Yeah. I am a simpleton when it comes to clothes. I've got Remember the that same. Time you bought a Gucci jumper and then literally looked at it and it, sent it, 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 back. Was, it was the most basic one. And I looked at it and I went, ah, it looks quite nice. It's kind of got a red colour, quite suits some red. And it came, tried it, and I went, nah, that's going back. <laughs> I'm not, I'm fucking stick to my, my plain stuff that I like and oh, enjoy mate. and everything else, you know? <laughs> like, I'm the type of guy that, that when I find a pair of trainers that I like, I will continue to buy that pair of trainer every fucking year. Do you know that way? I like that with 95s. The yeah. CL Max 95s, I always have them. Like, always have a fresh pair of 95s just to, yeah. they work with joggies, they work with, they work with everything. They're just your go-to every day. I, I, honest, I honestly like waking up, getting into my closet and going, I'll take that. So I've got multiple of the same stuff 
that I like for comfort and everything else. And it's just for me, it's convenience, it's quickness, it's no, have, you know, not try to look good for anyone else. Of course, you need to look reasonable and smart. Aye, and your clothes and, aren't you know, dirty or whatever. Uh, like, it's just... Yeah. The, the, let, let's have a wee chat about this because I think this will be good for people listening in terms of the whole saving or going out there and being more uh, proactive and making money because I don't know anyone, not a single soul, who's ever saved themselves to becoming a success and making money. It just doesn't happen. You know, inflation erodes your savings. And more importantly... You know, like you're not getting those types of returns sitting your money in the bank. Yeah. And it's demoralizing, you know, like how much can you save? Like if you actually ask yourself that question, how much can you save on a monthly basis? Most people are so over leveraged they don't have any savings. They're stuck in their overdraft or they're stuck on their credit cards or having to take out loans or store cards and everything else. Like you've got to get control of that. That's an absolute must because if you don't get control of that, then you're in this vicious circle that you're never going to get out of it. Your first steps needs to be clearing that shit and getting a healthy relationship around money. And that must mean that you need to stop overspending. It might mean you need to go back to zero by getting rid of shit that's just draining you. But you also simultaneously need to go more on the, the offense. Um, maybe it is getting a new skill set and learning more about entrepreneurism. And it's, I mean, for what people can invest in education through the Yes Academy oh, yeah. on a monthly basis is an absolute drop in the ocean. It's like a fraction of what anything else for the content that we are delivering, real practical stuff that people can start applying it out there and getting freaking results. Spend more than one night out. Exactly. And not even going to a good place, going to the Savoy <laughs> and getting gonorrhea and sticky trainers. <laughs> like the worst place. <laughs> I know. And, Do you want to hear a, a, like, so you're talking about saving and yeah, yeah. all that kind of stuff there. Here's a crazy statistic for you that I heard on a podcast a couple of weeks ago. 85% of Americans, 350 million people, have under $4,000 in their personal checking account. And 94% of those people have under $1,000 in their checking account. Yeah. That's like 300 million people with under a grand. I'm and not, one of the biggest economies in the world. I'm not even surprised by that. No, no. You know? When you think about it, it's, it's shocking, but it's not surprising. Yeah. It's like, see, any time when my mum had money, like, wh whatever happened, like, it was normally when she was getting um, a loan from Greenwood, so the Provy. I was going to Provy. I was going to say that, but I didn't want to. But as soon as it, like, she used to send me to the door and tell, I'm not in, uh, or send me to the door where you're filming, like, five P's and ten P's and everything else, trying to pay for me a 16 pounds, whatever it needs to be due that week. <laughs> or or I always knew when we'd come in and we'd have a, a new hi fi or a new TV or, or, or something like that. Probably ticked for curries. Ticked for, yeah. for, for crazy for those Georges. Who don't know what tick is, it's finance, Scottish word for finance. Yeah, finance <laughs> by crazy Georges. What's crazy Georges? It was like a, just a. An electronic shop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Uh, I don't know if they're about, doubt it, um, because they were literally loan sharks. And I remember. <laughs> I remember the hi fi was 100 quid, they wanted 300 pounds back. Like fucking shit, you know, that was what kind of was like. And I remember coming back with the hi fi and, um, and it was gone. And I'd hate my mum and blame her for everything. It's just because she couldn't afford the payments. They came and took it, you know? So that was our reality. Anything that my mum had money, and this is, most people can relate with this. As soon as money came in, it would be a takeaway. You know, you would spend money on some it? stuff. Yeah, you'd be down to global. Ah, yeah, global <laughs> video. Global, global video. video. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm not getting one, I'm getting four. I'm, I'm like, we're really, doing a marathon this yeah. week. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just nuts. Money habits. So saving's not the answer. Absolutely isn't. No. And then the question is, well, well, how do I get out of the mess I'm in just now? How do I get more disposable income? And it's never about lack of, it's about being resourceful, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, you need to start where you start. There's so much free resources out there, it's unbelievable, but most people are just bouncing from one thing to the other. And that's not a bad thing when you're young, because you're trying to figure out what lane do I want to go down, what do I want oh, to learn, yeah. what do I want to... Changing you careers know? And, exactly. and all that kind of stuff. You're thinking about you different know, stuff. And then society starts to label you as something, your peer group around you are trying to tell you to go and focus on, you know, getting a career, getting a trade or whatever it may be. And if you're a misfit and you feel that that's not what you want, you want something else and you're destined for more than life, then, you know, you've got to go searching a little bit. But the thing that every single person needs to do until you find out what it is you want to go and excel in or actually... To choose a lane is just personal development mm -hmm. working on you as an individual because if you can become more confident that's going to have a knock-on effect in other areas of life and how you show up because people are not born with confidence no that happens by getting out there and feeling not confident about something but being prepared to stretch your comfort zone being prepared to get into a different network mm -hmm. meet different people we just had an event over the weekend there and we see it all the time when we run our 
our um, events to our, our young entrepreneurs is that um, they all feel uncomfortable coming to a room of other people. And we've got some younger, we had a couple of 16, 17 year olds here at the event at the weekend and they were coming up and saying, look, I'm so nervous to speak to you, but, but I just wanted to say hello and I'm so grateful for this stuff here. Like I get that because I remember going to an event at 19, my first ever property event, it was an American company that came to the UK. And I remember walking up to the Radisson Hotel already thinking that I shouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like an imposter. Like, who am I? I'm 19 and, I, and, and why and, should and I why, be here? Why should I be here? It would have been even worse then than now because I have social media. He didn't see that the world young people that were successful that existed. None of your peer group would have been successful. Yeah. I mean, there's much more younger people getting involved in business, entrepreneurship, property, and all that stuff nowadays. Back then, property was primarily 95% like older males mm -hmm. now it's much more diverse a lot of great females coming through and everything else which is great but for me get up to there i walked up to the table to register and i said i'm just here for the event and she went oh okay i'll check in a, in a moment but but where's your parents and i'm like oh, I, I am really not feeling this right now yeah and then That's when gonna knock you oh, my, my confidence was massively knocked and i know for all the watchers or listeners here that you're going to think i'm an absolute straight up liar with what i'm about to say here they're going to think I'm an absolute liar. Paul, why would you just lie to my face? <laughs> right? You're going to think that. You won't believe what I'm about to say. You won't believe that when I was in my younger days, younger ages in my late teens, even into my early 20s, that I found it difficult to get the ladies. <laughs> no. No I know, way. straight up lie, right? What? Because I was so socially awkward. Uh -huh. I couldn't look another girl in the fucking eyes. Another girl? What, are you another girl? girl? <laughs> I could, I could I look at the women in the eyes. I could look. Hey, these days you can be anything you want. Yeah, true, true. That is true. I couldn't look at a, 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 another girl. I couldn't look a girl in the eye. Like I, if I just looked at her, I'd be so socially awkward and everything else. So now which is mad because it's not like your missus is exactly not good looking now. Like. That, that took me a long time to pluck up the courage and the confidence and become the man that I had to be to, to attract yeah, yeah, a yeah. woman like Alexa. So for me, that was that was thing. Like, like I wasn't just another girl that I found found it very social awkward to be around. It was just other people. Interaction in Interaction. General. Like yeah. someone like yourself who is at a young age, super confident, can talk a lot, communicating. You get a higher A in drama, right? Yes. Is that right? B, B, B. A, a B. I got a B. Do you know why I got a B, right? Just a quick side story. About to do the thing, the crucible, the examiner was like a guy. This is for your live performance, you need to do a written bit as well. And like the curtains go back. And as I'm about to start talking, he does this. He's sitting like this, taking notes, and he goes literally like this. <laughs> and I just went, <laughs> like, forgot my lines, mate, because he'd done it in just like the most flamboyant way. I couldn't take myself seriously. And I stuttered a little bit, and then he was like, yeah, B, you're useless. <laughs> so that's what it was. So yeah, I should have should got an A. I failed my solo talk as well. Can you believe it? You failed your solo talk? Uh, no, an, an I get English. told that your solo talk was so bad they thought you were beatboxing. You're going. <laughs> that's that's literally what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, that is what did you do your solo talk on? So here's the thing. So so I miss school quite a lot, right? <laughs> Missed or didn't attend? Dogged school. Yeah, I right? <laughs> missed was very kind there. I think. And um, and through that there, I missed the day where everyone got to choose a subject because you had to go and watch a, a videotape of a subject. Oh my God. And there was only one subject left for me to then choose, which was cruelty to dogs in South Korea. I had to go and watch a video. Wait, you didn't get to pick your own subject? Yeah, there was tons to pick. No, we just got to pick anything we were no, interested in. No, not I us. Done, I done the X Games. Well, that'd be fucking cool. I mean, me having to sit and watch dogs getting fucking butt lit, it was horrific. And I had to go and do a solo <laughs> talk on it. So no wonder I was beatboxing when I fucking stood, stood up to Mrs. Burns, who fucking ridiculed me. <laughs> and, and here's the thing, but one of my, ma my mates as well, we oh. Joycey, right? He's sitting in the front, taking the piss out of me, doing a wee funny look and, and everything. And I'm sitting there looking around everyone in the fucking class looking at me and I can't even speak. Words are not coming out. Like I'm Eminem. stuttering away. Like, honestly, it was so embarrassing. So, yeah, I, I failed my, my soul talk <laughs> English. You know, I, I was a... Uh, confidence is built for some people. Yeah, and, and here's the thing when it comes to confidence. It's, it's, it takes you... 
takes you trying to just get some little wins under your belt and feeling uncomfortable. And I respect those uh, young lads that come up to us over the weekend that are saying, look, this, this is a big comfort zone stretcher for me. I felt so uncomfortable, you know, and, and, and it's, it's like I, I didn't want to speak to other people and everything else because I felt that I've been there. But the fact that they made the decision to just go. To do it. To do it. Pull the trigger. It's just amazing. And I think for me, at, at such a young age and put myself in awkward situations that I did not feel comfortable with uh, is what builds your character up to be more confident and stuff because it goes back to everything you're saying, isn't it? Like, you know, it's this kind of idea of living in a bigger home or having a nicer car. It seems so out of this world. And I always talk about the closest way to feel that you should deserve that internally from a subconscious point of view and actually move towards it is to go and test drive the dream car. And I say that about 100%. someone because like, what's your dream car? It's like a Ferrari. Can't remember what, what Ferrari it was. It's a, a Ferrari. And I was like, well, go and test drive a Ferrari and he's looking at me as if I'm stupid going well how am I supposed to and I get that like if you go you go to Ferrari then might turn around and go no you're not fucking getting this right or whatever you get supercar days at like Knock Hill like that's exactly what I was ah, going to say boom, 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 so nice. go to Knock Hill and it's race like, a Ferrari 150, 200 quid yeah yeah so, to, so I remember someone try three supercars or something the one that I did because I got it as a, as a gift back in the day I can't remember what type of Ferrari it was either and you, you go around in the what was it the See it a beef or something like that. No, it's a Cupra. Is it a Cupra? Yeah. I've done it. Like it's, I done a thing called Teen Drive there. So when you don't qualify, you, you're not old enough to drive unless you go and do Teen Drive. So I didn't. It was the time you done it. It was probably a Ferrari three six zero Modena. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what, what it was. It was a 360. So, so, so you go around in the the, the Cupra, whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, the Cupra's take, fast by the way. Yeah, no, it was good fun. And then you get a few laps in the the, the Ferrari, but just going through that, feeling the gear change, putting the foot foot down. Was it gated manual? It was, was manual. It the manual with a gate in it? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. And, and you need to kind of force it into the second uh -huh. gear as you go in certain corners and stuff like that. But uh, I, I've got it in, on camera and everything else. Oh, wow. And I was kind of nervous as fuck driving it. Do you know that way? Well, if you but, cash it, you're thinking... I know, I'm but you've got, you've, got the, you've got the guy next to you, haven't you, that's um, your co-pilot telling you when to push and everything else. And I love that. I get such a buzz out of it. And it's like putting yourself into those kind of experiences... Yep that you can do it. Like, sure, if you can't go and test drive a Ferrari in, like, a Ferrari garage, then go and do a racetrack day. You know, the more that you can experience it and feel those things, yeah. the more that it becomes something that you will subconsciously want to move towards. That's the thing. Like, if you don't have... Imagine the London Marathon, right? Now, when you're training for the London Marathon, you know how exactly how long it's going to be, but you're going to get a map. You know the route that you're going to, that it's all fenced off, you know where you're going. Imagine the London Marathon was just a bunch of people in the middle of London. Somebody shot the gun and they just ran in different directions. And you would hope that you would eventually turn around the corner and go, there's the finish line. Like, just because you can run 26 miles, whatever a marathon is, doesn't mean you're running the right path or whatever. If you took a football pitch and made the goals invisible and put them on random places around the line, it would just be a bunch of guys kicking a ball out, hoping it was going through the goal. Like, if you don't know where your destination is, you don't know how to get to the thing you want because because you've never touched, you've never experienced it, you've got no, like, roadmap to get there. It's nearly impossible to, f to find that thing. Like, and I've been the young guy, 20, 21, driving the worst cars you've ever seen, parking them round the back of a garage so that nobody knows that I was there, walking in in my shorts and flip-flops and T-shirt and asking to see Bentleys, asking to see this and that. I couldn't have afforded... I, to replace a button on a Bentley, to put a tire on a Bentley. I could probably couldn't have put a part worn on a Bentley then, but I had to get there. Like, I had to brass neck it. That's exactly what it is, is brass necking it. Just going in and going, oh, can I, can I see the, the Bentayga, please? Um, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. You just command that bit of respect. You just have to double down, yeah. And then you sit in it for a second, and you go, wow. And I was never going to get to test drive it, but I had to sit. How am I meant to know how that feels? How are you supposed to get excited for something you've never experienced? Imagine I said to you, Paul, what's your favourite dinner in the world? He goes, lasagna. I love lasagna. Oh, really? Where have you had the best lasagna you've ever had? Oh, I've never tried it. I just think that's my favourite dinner. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, you, you cannot be motivated by something that you've never experienced. Yeah, th this is the thing. It's, it's all about levels to certain things. I remember, look, I was traumatised with wine growing up. Like, think about it. As in when you're underage drinking, mm, right? Because mm. 'Cause you're you're drinking the cheapest shit. Echo Falls, it's like paint exactly. stripper, isn't it? Oh yeah, it was I bought a Tudor Rose for two quid out of Tesco. Oh my god, it was awful, wow. disgusting, like the most so I was traumatized by wine. And I remember being down in London and I'm in my late twenties, because remember like 
uh, after I grew up, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm not touching wine ever. Like any time I was out for a dinner and people would have wine, I'd be like, how I've weird been in is situations that? for you where I could say that that's not true. But but in my, my is this the rebuff of this Paul is the rebuff? Like, so the I remember concert? I remember being because I like I love red wine now, but it's a difference because. I was traumatized thinking all wines the same. Even when I had a little taste of a ten quid, twenty quid bottle of red wine, I'm like, oh, this it's is like vile. balsamic vinegar. Yeah, it's just like I just couldn't understand. It's like how can anyone have a acquired taste for that? I remember being in my mid twenties, and I was down in London. I was with a, a bunch of mates, and they were buying a couple hundred pound bottles of red. And I mean, you've been in days where you've been out and you're you're, you're dropping a couple hundred quid in, in all sorts of different bottles, right? But in my head, I couldn't comprehend why they were doing that with red wine because I was so traumatized. Like and this whole story came up and it says, look, try this, Paul, right? And it was a proper show. It was a Mitchell's Star restaurant. You know, the wine connoisseur comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pairs up, thing yeah, yeah, yeah. Pairs up around, all the food yeah. and everything else. Tells you a bit of story behind it. It's like, like, try this. Like, smell it. And I'm smelling it. I go, oh, okay, it's fine. And then, then try it, talking you through it, how you actually have the taste in your mouth. And you're I'm just down in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like on your nose. I exactly. It's how you drink it. Sometimes. I know how you drink it. So I'm sitting there trying this and I'm like, shit, this is good. Hold on a wee minute. And it was from that day that I started looking into it. And and then I, I started getting it's not like you have to go and buy 200 quid bottles of red wine because because no. you don't like my thought process of buying a 200 quid bottle of alcohol that you're just going to down is just like still can't even comprehend it, right? It's just like stupidity. You know, it must be the 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 poverty mindset in me from my younger for days. Sure, for sure. You've still got some shackles to be released yeah, from, yeah. I think. Because it, it's a bit like designer gear as well. In my head, sometimes. Yeah, you're some still... of, But designer gear that's just got Gucci here. In my head, is like, why the fuck would you pay Gucci 500 quid for a jumper to advertise on their behalf? In my head, I can't comprehend that, you know? Anyway, anyway, let's not go off track. <laughs> so, so. Um, plus it just doesn't even look nice anyway so then I started to get really nice bottles of wine and I love a great bottle of wine I really do and it goes back to what we're all saying here if you never go and experience and try something like fly first class like imagine you can't afford it and you're always flying economy and at one time you save up or you go out there and you do a deal or whatever and you, then you yeah. go and fly first which at the time probably doesn't make sense I will guarantee you that you'll find it difficult to go back to fly economy. You have to go back to fly economy if you're still flying, and you'll be like, I need to go back to fly first. I need to go back and, you know, to, to fly business. Why? Anger and frustration is a great motivator. But because you want that experience again. You really do. So let's um, let's bring this, uh, our first podcast wow. to a close here. I think this is good. We could talk for ages, but we're definitely going to be doing a lot more of this. So again, just a week recap. So for, for those that might be watching this or listening to this, uh, we have got our Young Entrepreneur Society. We've got our Yes Academy, which we want to help younger people. Hey, I'm 37. So hey, we're all young at heart to you know get started in their entrepreneurial journey whether it's in business whether it's in investing whether it's just getting personal development we've got some great products already that you can access and get you know start learning and getting applying in your business and your life just now and we've got so many great stuff get launched in the coming months as well so richard your thoughts on it too yeah so we are relaunching for membership intakes for the yes academy on the first of november and um, that's going to be our next intake. And look, we don't really accept average in the Yes Academy. That's still like what we're against. If you're someone, this is me just being honest, if you're someone who's like, oh, I could do with an extra 100 quid a week, an extra 200 quid a week, th this probably isn't for you, to be honest. Like, we are looking for people who are wanting to add an extra zero onto that. How do I make an extra 10 grand a month? Like, we're aiming for six figure entrepreneurs, minimum, absolute minimum. I was able to achieve through the systems that Paul taught me um, a six-figure income inside my first year as a property entrepreneur. And that's kind of what I wish for other people as well. So if you're someone who maybe education's failed you a bit, maybe the support network you had around you didn't push you towards the things that were, were actually your passion or you were financially motivated, that was crushed by being put into a career that just doesn't fit you, the Yes Academy is for you. I can tell you right now, and the members will tell you themselves, I was speaking to one of the guys the other day and put a great video of it on our uh, Instagram channel as well. Um, this stuff you just can't learn in college, you can't learn in university. If you want to go and be a brain surgeon, unfortunately we're not going to be doing anything about that in the Yes Academy. If you want to go and you want to make fucking money, whether that's to donate to your church or mosque, whether that's to drive a Rolls Royce, whether that's to wear patties, fly business class, do whatever, 
then the Yes Academy is what the you need. Place to be. <laughs> yeah. Nice one. Good stuff. So we'll be back for our second podcast. I'm going to enjoy yes. doing this. It's good. Ah, it's good, man. It's good. Nice one. Brilliant. Cheers. 